HMS Daring of 1893. During the early 1890s, the British Admiralty requested designs for small destroyers that would be faster than the rapidly growing fleet of French torpedo boats the French had needed most of the century to recover from the total destruction of their fleet during the Napoleonic Wars. So they concentrated on the design of small fast craft capable of attacking enemy capital ships. Thornycroft and Yarrow subsequently came up with the design for Daring. Based on their successful seagoing torpedo boats, the hull at the stern it had a flat floor at the waterline, so enabling the screws to be lifted to allow for navigation in relatively shallow waters. Daring was scrapped in 1912. Her sister boat, Decoy, was lost in a collision in 1904. Both vessels were built by Thornycroft and were stronger than contemporary vessels built by Yarrow. Country of origin, Britain, type destroyer. Launch date, 25th of November, 1893. Crew, 98. Displacement, 264 tonnes. Endurance, not known. Main armament, 112 pounder, 36 pounders, 3 torpedo tubes. Power plant, twin screw, 3 stage, compound engines. Performance, 22 knots. This time on my Vehicle History channel, on the day that Lewis Hamilton won the British Grand Prix, I thought I'd do a subject very close to my heart. I've wanted to go to Dunkirk for many years. Paddle steamers brought many hundreds of men back. Paddle steamers at Dunkirk, 1940, of a few of them ships. Unfortunately, they weren't all as lucky as the Medway Queen. Royal Eagle, an anti-aircraft vessel from the Thames Flotilla, Royal Eagle was the largest paddler present at Dunkirk and came under her attack on 43 occasions whilst making three return crossings, first sailing to Ramsgate and then on landing more than a thousand men, including seriously wounded at its Sheerness base on May the 31st, resumed Thames patrols for the remainder of the war. Official record. 2,657 men landed. My favourite next, Sandown. As senior officer's vessel Sandown led the 10th flotilla to Dunkirk on the 27th of May and again next day, subsequently sailing independently. Whilst returning to France on June the 1st, the Sandown was used. Its motorboat to take 250 men off a grounded drafter. Rearmed for anti-aircraft duty, Sandown supported the Normandy landings. Official record 1,861 men landed. Thames Queen, another vessel popularly believed to have been involved in at least the early stages of the evacuation despite the lack of any references in the official records, Thames Queen was certainly at Dover before the start of Operation Dynamo and it is claimed to have sailed as part of the 10th Flotilla on the 27th of May. Next, one of my all-time favourite paddle steamers, the Waverley. After taking in stores and fuel at Great Yarmouth, Waverley recovered orders to Dunkirk from an MBT motor torpedo boat in the Thames estuary. Arriving off Lopani on the 29th of May, the vessel landed an estimated 600 men under her attack and was heading for home when struck by three bombs in quick succession and had to be abandoned. Westwood Ho! By the time Westwood Ho arrived from the 4th, the evacuation was well underway. The steamer made two crossings and possibly a third. Troops landed at Margate, including one large French contingent. Westwood Hall resumed mine sweeping until boiler trouble resulted in it being used as an accommodation ship at Dartford. Official record 1,686 men landed. Her Majesty's Australian ship, Adelaide. HMAS Adelaide and her sisters. Canberra, Sydney, Darwin, Melbourne and Newcastle are the Royal Australian Navy's versions of the Holliver Hazard Perry class of guarding missile frigates. All six ships have been modernised and are equipped to carry 
the Sikorsky Seahawk ASW helicopter. The weapon system is being upgraded with various options being considered. These include the installation of a short range missile system, probably Sea Sparrow, as well as fitting her with enhanced electronic mine avoidance and, tor and torpedo countermeasures. HMAS in Adelaide, Darwin and Canberra are at Fleet Base West, with the remainder in at, at Fleet Base East for operational tasks. The vessels are fitted with enhanced communications and other equipment such as electro-optical sites. All the ships can operate in a fighter direction role. Country of origin, Australia. Type, guided missile frigate. Launch date, the 21st of June 1972. Crew 184, displacement 4,165 tonnes. Dimensions 453 feet times 45 feet times 24 feet 6 inches. Endurance 4,200 nautical miles. Main armament 176mm 3 inch gun. Harpoon SAM systems and standard SAMs. Also 12.75 inch torpedo tubes power plant is a single shaft two gas turbines and performance is very quick at 29 knots and next weekend we are back onto tanks gunboat victoria during the 1880s britain's australian colony began to build up a sizable navy for local defense as australia had no suitable construction facilities the new additions were built in britain Victoria was a steel-hulled vessel armed with a single 254mm or 10-inch gun mounted forward behind a raised bulwark. The entire vessel had to be turned in order to train the gun on its target. Engines developed 800 horsepower and coal supply was 91 tons. Although relatively small vessels such as the Victoria proved a useful deterrent against raiding cruisers which could not afford to run the risk of being damaged so far from their home ports and whose activities were hampered by a lack of calling facilities. Settling these up was a major drain on the resources of the European naval powers. Victoria was sold in 1896. HMVS Victoria was a gunboat that served with the Victorian Naval Forces on Western Australia before being sold into private use. Design. This class was built to a type D flat iron gunboat designed and built Armstrong Michael and Company. So I'm wondering if they are the forerunners of Armstrong Whitworth aircraft because I believe before they built aircraft they actually built howitzers for the British so it could be the same company. Operational history. In late February 1884, Victoria was in Malta on her delivery voyage to Australia with the gunboat Albert and a torpedo boat. When the news of General Charles Gordon's death at Khartoum reached the British Empire, the three ships were immediately offered for service in the Sudan campaign. That was definitely the campaign were they don't like it up. The offer was accepted, was abs was accepted accepted or oh, help and under the smaller less a seaworthy torpedo boat was sent ahead by the time the two larger gunboats reached their destination on the 19th of march the conflict had moved too far inland for warships to be of any assistance the vessels all departed three days later to continue their voyage to the colony they arrived in melbourne on the 26th of june after traveling via Aden, Colombo and the Dutch East Indies. Due to the depression of the 1890s, Victoria was decommissioned in 1893 and sold. She was subsequently purchased by the Western Australian government in 1896 and was purchased again in 1902 by the Sydney-based tug company Fenwix, who used her as a towing vessel. She was then scrapped in 1920 after 18 years of service in Sydney Harbour. Country of origin, Australia, but built in Britain. Type, gunboat. Launch date, 1884. Crew, 20. Displacement, 530 tonnes. Dimensions, 140 feet times 27 feet times 11 feet. Endurance, unknown. Main armament, one 10 inch gun. Power plant, twin screws, compound engines. And performance, surprisingly, 12 knots.
So for the 300 subscriber special and the start of a brand new series, Aaron, Class Lifeboat. I've had a fascination with lifeboats since I was age four and would love to go on the seven class lifeboat. Link in the description for the lifeboat tours of the prototype Aaron class. St. Catherine's Docks, London. Although the first Aaron to be built was something of an experimental design, she entered service and had a full life-saving career for the best part of a quarter of a century. Named Aaron, she was the first of only three Aarons to have wooden hulls and was completed by William Osborne led at the Aaron shipyard Littlehampton in 1971. As the first of a new and revolutionary lifeboat design she was used for trials and evaluation for over a year going on a tour of the lifeboat stations in Great Britain and Ireland. In May 1971 she was taken by a delegation from the RNLI to Malmö, Sweden. That's southern Sweden, by the way. For an international conference of you know, volunteer lifeboat organisations organised by the Swedish Lifeboat Service. And they look nothing like ours. They are odd colours, to be honest, for somebody who's used to seeing lifeboats in orange. Shall we say very multicoloured their boats are. During her voyage from Dover to Scandinavia, Aron visited ports in the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark and Norway. Aron spent much of 1971 touring lifeboat stations around the British Isles including a visit to London in June 1971 when she was moored near Lambeth Bridge. During this tour she was in Scrabster for the naming of the new Thurscore 48 foot 6 inch Solent lifeboat the three sisters on August the 11th Having been installed as a station lifeboat at Kirkwall in total on passage evaluation trials, she undertook 10 launches, 5 in 1971 and 5 in 1972, and saved two lives. Aaron was formally named at the ceremony on the 23rd of September 1972 at Littlehampton, where she had been built by Mrs. Randolph Forent, Having been formally handed over to the RNLI by Mr. K.J.B. Webb, Chairman of the Bird's Eye Foods Limited, she had been funded by Bird's Eye Foods through the Help to Launch a Lifeboat Appeal, together with gifts from Mrs. Alice Johnston and legalities left by H.F. Eastland, Miss M. Harrison, Miss F.J. Hart and Miss... V.E. Young. After the successful completion of her evaluation trials, she was sent to St. Peter Port as station lifeboat. She arrived at Guernsey on October the 15th, 1972, placed on service there after a dedicated ceremony at which William T. Bishop, a member of the Committee of Management, addressed the crowd. She spent more than a year at St. Peter Port launching on 25 occasions. After being replaced by the second Aaron, Sir William Arnold, in November 1973, she spent the next six months acting as a relief lifeboat at St. Peter Port until being reallocated to Barry Docks in May 1974. Before taking up her station duties, Aaron was sent to Ocean Fleet's boatyard at Birkenhead for overhaul and then went to Barry Dock. In early June 1974, she served for more than 20 years and at the South Wales station covering the Bristol Channel, during which time she was launched 331 times on service and saved 25 lives. When built, Aaron was equipped with twin 375 horsepower Caterpillar D336TA eight cylinder engines on the 26th of June 1991 she was taken to the Falmouth Boat Company yard in Cornwall where she was given a complete overhaul and re-engined with twin 485 horsepower Caterpillar 3208TA diesel engines with which she reached a top speed of just over 15 knots the work was finished by April 1992 and after a series of trials, she left Falmouth in June and returned to Barry Dock. In May 1997, Aaron was replaced by another 
52 foot Arun lifeboat Margaret Francis Love and was then taken to the RNLI depot at Poole to be sold in October 1997 she was purchased by the engineering firm Ladco and then renamed Arun Adventurer. She has operated from Dundee Docks as, as a publicity boat for more than a decade and is occasionally moored at Broughtley Ferry and also visits Angborough. Stats. Name Aaron. Number 5201. Official number 1018. Year built 1971. Builder William Osborne Limited, Little Hampton. Weight 25 tonnes of 5 CWT. Cost £99,110. Stations St Peterport Guernsey, October the 15th, 1972 to May 1973, 25/13. And Barry Dock, 7th of June 1974 to May 1997, 331/75. Disposal. Sold out of service October 1997 to the engineering firm Ladco of Dundee. So the number 5201, so that refers to the 52 means the class of vessel that it is and the 01 is the boat's number, so it's number one out of its class. 